Chair, Conference, Dioch, thank you for such a warm welcome. Um, conference, I know that everyone here and across Wales are thinking about the people of Ukraine. Uh, the Putin regime's illegal invasion of Ukraine is a murderous attack, not only on the Ukrainian people, but also on sovereignty, on democracy, freedom and the rule of law. And the horrific suffering that we are seeing on our television screens, increasing by the day, is almost too painful to comprehend. Wales is a nation of sanctuary, and we stand ready to welcome and support refugees from Ukraine, as we did from Afghanistan and from Syria. And I know the people of Wales will play their part. But the UK government has to step up. The Home Secretary's chaotic approach and the government's incomprehensible lack of planning has been deeply, deeply damaging. And I'm pleased that today we have sent that clear message from conference. Thank you. <laughs> conference, this is the first time I've addressed you as Labour's Shadow Secretary of State for Wales, and it's a huge honour to do so. And I'm extremely proud, not just to have been part of Keir's shadow cabinet since his election, and what a powerful speech that was from Keir this morning. I'm proud because I know firsthand what a brilliant leader he is and what a brilliant Labour Prime Minister he will be. <laughs> Leading a Labour government that will have security, prosperity and respect at the heart of everything we do. And as a country, um, we have seen during the last, past two years how Keir is a determined and dedicated public servant who always puts the country's interests first, just like our first uh, minister, Welsh Labour leader, Mark Drakeford. <laughs> Conference, I'm also very proud of our 22 Welsh Labour MPs, both for the work that they do on behalf of all their constituents, but also for challenging and exposing, day in, day out, what the Tories are doing. I want to thank my wonderful Shadow Welsh team colleagues, Jessica Morden, Gerald Jones, and Debbie Wilcox in the Lords. And of course, our Deputy Leader of Welsh Labour, Carolyn Harris, who's, <laughs> who's inevitably, inevitably successful campaigns, I don't think she's had one that's failed yet, epitomise the values of our party. And I want to pay tribute to my predecessor, Nia Griffith, a dear friend and an amazing colleague. Thank you, Nia. Whatever we do in our Labour Party, we do it as a team. And I want to echo Carolyn and Keir's thanks to Louise McGee and Dave Costa and to welcome Joe McIntyre and Joe Locke to their new leadership roles. And I have to say, it's always good to see so many Joes leading from the front. <laughs> Thank you also to all our Welsh staff who work, our Welsh Labour staff, who work their socks off to get candidates elected at every level. I'm, I'm in awe of what they do every time an election is called. But none of us, none of us could do what we do without you, our Welsh Labour family, without your support, your dedication and your commitment. And to all our trade union friends across Wales, my wonderful trade union family for over 30 years, I want to say a very personal thank you. Thank you for the honour of working with and for you, campaigning with you, and especially winning with you. Thank you. <laughs> Conference, as we've heard, in just 54 days, it will be polling day. The elections on the 5th of May will be our last elections before the next general election, and that can't come soon enough. People across Wales and across the UK are facing the biggest drop in living standards for 30 years. This is a conservative cost of living crisis, a crisis that has been made in Downing Street. It's down to the choices made by the conservative government. Highest inflation for a decade, gas and electricity bills rising 14 times faster than wages cuts to universal credit and to working tax credit, more people being pushed into higher rates of tax, and national insurance levels about to increase by more than 10%, yet another
broken Tory manifesto promise and a real-term cut to state pensions, to state pensions. In just a couple of weeks' time, the numbers on people's pay slips will go down and the numbers on their bills will go up. But it doesn't have to be like this. It did not have to be like this. And it's time for Labour's proposal for a windfall tax on North Sea oil and gas profits to be implemented by the Tory government. When you've, got, when you've got the boss of one of those companies saying that they have got more cash than they know what to do with, we know that a windfall tax is the answer. But what's the Tories' answer? A buy now, pay later scam from a loan shark chancellor who's been far too busy hiding away and planning his leadership challenge rather than focusing on repairing the damage that his party has caused. Building back badly, levelling down, not up, we have a discredited, dishonest Prime Minister and we have a discredited, dishonest government. What a contrast with our leadership in Wales. A Welsh Labour government that has led us through the pandemic by listening to the scientists, by making decisions in the national interest and communicating them clearly. A Welsh Labour government that has helped families and households deal with the conservative cost of living crisis and put money back into people's pockets through a 330 million pound support package. Doubling of winter fuel support payment, the council tax reduction scheme, a real living wage for our precious social care workers and free school meals for every child in primary schools across Wales with funding for more free school meals during Easter, Whitsun and summer holidays. Conference, that is the difference that Labour in power makes. And conference, when I think back to the start of the pandemic two years ago, I remember how our Welsh Labour representatives at every level swung into action. Within 48 hours, Labour-led councils and Labour councillors, our council staff with our trade unions, put huge changes into effect and adapted to unprecedented circumstances. People moved and did different jobs and new jobs because that wasn't what was needed for Wales. And they kept going throughout those two years. I saw my own Welsh local Labour councillors and others across Cardiff picking up prescriptions, delivering food and essential medicines to those who were vulnerable and shielding. Also organising food drops to our fabulous key workers in our local hospitals. In Wrexham, Labour councillors at the Venture charity in Kaya Park that provides trailblazing, trailblazing play facilities, learning and support for children and young people, showed real leadership, in contrast to the infighting of the independent councillors in control of Wrexham Council, who are just fighting amongst themselves instead of for the people of Wrexham. Our Labour councillors up and down Wales have been inspirational in the most difficult of times. But as well as our helping our communities through the pandemic, Labour councillors have been delivering and investing for the future. In Bridgend, the Labour Council has helped more than 4,600 people into work through their dedicated employability scheme. At the height of the second Covid wave, Labour's Caerphilly Council delivered their one millionth free school meals, an astonishing achievement made possible by a great Labour Council with a great Labour leader, Philippa Marsden, and our Welsh Labour Government. In Cardiff, there are plans for thousands of new council homes over the next two years, including the recently completed brand new net zero council homes, welcoming their first occupants in Cardiff Central. 90% more efficient than standard homes, tackling the housing shortage, climate crisis and reducing energy costs all at the same time. And I've seen for myself hundreds of high quality new homes built through the council just down the road in Flint, superb new care facilities and a brand new town centre regeneration that has created jobs and apprenticeships locally, all delivered by a brilliant Labour-led council in Flintshire. <laughs> Conference, in recent weeks, Wales has borne the brunt also of three storms. 
wreaking havoc within days of each other. And we don't forget the impact of the floods and the damage they cause to our valley communities, which is still very raw. Significant investment in infrastructure and flood defences has been made by Labour councils across Wales, including in Neath Port Talbot, Cardiff and Ronvacan on Taff, amongst others. And most importantly, for Wales's future and Wales's future generations, our Welsh Labour government and Welsh Labour councils are transforming our schools through the 21st century schools building programme, delivering the best possible learning environments for our children and young people, from Bishopston to Brinabal. Conference, we want and we need to continue this work, to continue to make that real positive difference for all our communities, villages, towns, cities, right across Wales. And that's why we have to get as many of our brilliant Welsh Labour candidates elected as we possibly can in just 54 days' time. And I talked earlier about how we only achieve what we achieve as a team. And imagine what that great team would be. More Labour-led councils, Mark as our First Minister and Keir as our Prime Minister, leading a UK Labour government. And our first step towards that is on the 5th of May. I know you will do everything you can to get as many of our council candidates over the line to make that difference. So, conference, 54 days, we've got to do it. Let's get out there, let's do it, and let's do it successfully. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joe Stevens, MP, Shadow, Secretary of State for Wales, and Cardiff Central MP. Thank you.